Hi, I'm Heather Hardy, and today I wanted to talk about an aspect of communication that most people tend to underestimate, the power of listening. Being able to communicate is the most important of all life skills, and good communicators know how to listen. They also understand that developing that skill is important, especially when it comes to building professional and personal relationships. So I wanted to touch upon a couple of the skills that actually can help you become a more effective listener. But you may be thinking to yourself, why is that so important? Well, for one, in business, they've actually identified listening as the most important skill that's utilized by their top performers and people that are promoted. And in 70% of small to mid-sized businesses, they actually report monetary losses due to ineffective communicators. So pretty significant there. In academics, students with better listening skills get higher test scores, and they do better academically overall. Um, But take a moment and think about how you might be affected by others' listening skills. What if you went to the doctor and their head wasn't in the game that day? They didn't really listen to what your ailment was. Or what if you reported a crime and when the police came to your neighborhood, they thought you were the criminal? Or what if your spouse just wasn't paying attention when you told them when and where you needed them to pick up your child later that day? Pretty concrete examples. But before we go on, let's do something fun. Let's do a little listening exercise. So, a farmer has five haystacks in one field. And in another field, he has four haystacks. If he combines all the haystacks in one field, how many does he have? If you're a good listener, you'd know that he has one. He combines the haystacks. But if you're like most people, myself included, when I first heard it, you take four and five, which is nine, and you associate the pre-made bales with uh, farms, so you don't think about the loose stacks before they're made. And therein lies the answer. The loose stacks come together and make one big stack. Pretty sneaky. But... Hearing and listening are two totally different things. Hearing happens automatically, with or without your consent. Generally, you're unaware of it. Researchers actually say we can hear about 20 to 30,000 words in any given 24-hour period, which is a lot. And we don't retain nearly that much information. In fact, while we're listening, we forget almost 50% of what's said almost immediately. Listening, on the other hand, takes your conscious effort to pay attention, to focus on the speaker, and really concentrate on the meaning of what's being said. And listening has to be learned. I know a lot of people think that's silly. Most people think they're great listeners. But the truth is, that's a myth. We're not actually born with skills for listening. And without practice over periods of time, most people are not particularly effective listeners. So what can you do to practice to become an effective listener? Well, um, you can keep some things in mind, such as making good eye contact, using your nonverbal cues to convey interest. Perhaps uh, you are smiling, nodding, Uh, have a good posture because slouching and looking at your watch are conveying non-interest. Minimize distractions around you. And this doesn't mean just noise. Sometimes you might want to go to another room so that you can fully focus on that person. Temperature can be to play. If you have a lot of self-talk going on in your head, you got to tune that down. Um, Even, you know, how comfortable the chairs are could play into how well you pay attention to somebody. Um, Ask questions and paraphrase or clarify to make sure that you're receiving the right message. But don't interrupt the person because that's rude and they tend to get turned off. Try and be open. Try and empathize. What are they really trying to tell you? And along with that, keep in mind that there are a lot of processing barriers that can actually keep you from getting the intended message. For example, If you have certain biases or if you're emotionally laden, 
Um, sometimes when people say something controversial, it can actually turn us off and we're not going to hear the message. That can be rather difficult to get over. Sometimes we sabotage the speaker because we don't feel that what they're saying has any relevance. And we've all been there. Totally bored, information we don't want to hear, um, not interested in. But sometimes you just have to do it. There may be a lot of information, and at this point, we would actually have to work hard at listening. Listening is work, especially in those circumstances. Or if you have a short attention span, um, or if you tend to daydream or have your mind wander, which I tend to do quite a lot. So keep these in mind. Next time you're talking with somebody, think of a skill. Talk to yourself afterwards, see how well you utilized it. The better listening skills you have, the more effective commun communicator you will become. And as you've seen from some of the examples, that can be an awesome thing. So thank you very much. <laughs>